From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar, answer it. Answer it! Johnny Dollar. Hello, Johnny, this is Jake Kessler. Be careful what you say. Uh, Johnny, what are you doing out there at the Too Lazy Two? Johnny! Talk to him, but be careful. Don't forget this gun. Why, uh, Jake, uh, what's on your mind? Three million dollars of insurance. Dora Haskell's filed a claim on the basis of accidental death. So unless you can come up pretty quick with proof the Haskell brothers were murdered... Jake, I have a funny feeling I'm looking at that proof right now. Careful. You mean there at the ranch? You still haven't told me what you're doing out there. Why, uh, why don't you come out here and see, Jake? What? You fool, I told you to watch what you say. What are you talking about, Johnny? Dollar, I'll pull this trigger so fast. You try that door and Jake will hear it over this phone and come out here anyway. What? Uh, Hello? He heard that. Hang up, hang up. Hello? Here, hang it up yourself. Oh, no, you... Tonight. And every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location near Kingman, Arizona. Attention, Mr. Jake Kessler, Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Proof that the Haskell brothers were murdered rather than killed accidentally in the cave-in at the Midas Touch mine could save Greater Southwest a cool million and a half dollars. But the one man who could have given me that proof was murdered himself. Thanks to Buster Favor at the Lake Mojave Resort who could read a set of tire tracks like you and I read a newspaper, I was able to trace the killer's car to the Too Lazy Two Ranch. And there, the evidence all pointed to the foreman, Alex Bundy. However, when Alex appeared at the ranch house, he also put the finger on Dora Haskell. That's when your phone call came in, Jake. And that's when... Oh, no, you don't know! Oh, thanks, Buster. Yeah, well, I kind of hate to hit a woman that way, but she wouldn't have missed with that rifle. Matter of fact, she didn't. She creased her arm there just a Oh, forget it. First of all, let's take this gun don't off. Don't touch it. Oh, that's right, Alex. Kind of forgot about you. Now, why don't you put that thing down before you make the same mistake she almost did? It won't be a mistake, Dollar. Now, look, Alex. Shut up, Buster. You should have known better than to mess around this whole thing. Maybe you're the one who should have known better, Alex. According to Dora here a few minutes ago... I heard her. I heard from outside the window. Heard all of it. And she lied. Keep an eye on her, Buster. Yeah, sure. Just stay where you are. Stay, stay away from that gun of hers, too. Look, Alex, why don't you just calm down? She lied. She was the one who shot at you down at the lake, not me. But it was you who shot up old hard luck Dennis when he tried to talk to me. Sure. Sure I did. I had to. He was going to tell you it was me that caved in the Midas touch on the Haskell brothers. He did tell me. Sure, he was going to tell you. I know he was. And I had to stop him. Wouldn't you have stopped a man who was trying to put a noose around your neck? Will you listen to me? That's why I had to kill him there at the hospital when he was well enough to talk some more. He would have put the finger on me. I tell you, he already had sure put the finger. Sure he would. I know he would. And I had to stop him. But it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault, Dollar. She was lying to you. I heard her outside. I heard. She was trying to lay it all on me, but she's the one, not me. In spite of your murder of hard luck. I had to, don't you understand me? I had to. Look, why don't you put down that gun and listen? She's the one all the way from the start. I'm not dumb, Dollar, but she was smarter than me, and she kept getting me in deeper and deeper. I'm a good ranch foreman, Dollar. See for yourself what I've done for the too lazy two. But this kind of thing I don't know about. So she got me in deeper and deeper right from the start. Just how did it start, Alex? I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it started. I got drunk one night over in Kingman. So I heard. Made a lot of foolish talk about wanting the too lazy two for myself. Any foreman wants to have a big ranch of his own. Any of them, ask him. You ask him. Isn't that true, Buster? You know. Alex, give me that. No, no, stay back. You stay back. I want him to know. I want him to know everything. She heard about what I'd said, understand? And she came to me, sweet-talked me. Said I could own the lazy two. Along with her. Made it sound so wonderful, just me and her. But then when she started plotting how to get rid of her husband, well, she thought he was going to die when he, when he came out here, but he didn't see. So she started plotting how to get rid of him. And I was, I was scared about that. But she told me I, I was already in it on account of I knew about it, so I better help her. So what else could I do? 
And all the time she kept me thinking how, how wonderful it would be, just me and her. Do, do you know what that means to a man, Mr. Dollar? Well, I can guess. So I helped her with the boat. You know the time, Buster. You mean when the Haskell sank during the windstorm out on the lake? Yeah, yeah, because I fixed the boat. I took out the flotation tanks and weakened the transom. So any kind of strain it would sink, and it did. Brother, you're in so deep. But you went after him. You saved him, didn't you, Buster? Yeah, I guess I did. So, but then I wasn't too deep, you see? You understand? Yeah, Alex, I understand. And I'm afraid that you're... But she thought of the mine. She made me tell old Hard Luck to take him out to the Midas Touch because he thought there was still gold in it. Johnny, did Hard Luck tell you the door got him started on that pit? No, Nobody would have. That's why I had to kill him. Because he would have blamed her. And then she would have blamed me the way she did you just now. Don't you see? All she was doing was using me. You didn't come out here looking for her. You were looking for me, weren't you? Yeah, Alex, I guess we were. And if there'd been a fight, if I tried to gun you down, she would have killed me. Then she would have been in the clear, don't you see? She would have killed me the way she made me kill Hard Luck. It took you a long, long time to realize it, didn't it, Alex? There were a lot of things you didn't realize. But what's done is done, and you can't ever change it. You're in so deep, there's no way out for you now. And you know it, Alex. But you're not going to make things any easier for yourself. No, 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 get back, get back, I tell you. I'm in so deep, I can't get in any deeper. That's what you really mean, isn't it? So my only chance is to kill you and try to get away with it. Alex, listen, boy. But before I try it, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her because of what she's done to me. Listen, you crazy, mixed up guy. Sure. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe I've been crazy all along, but I'm going to kill her. You hear me? I'm going to kill her now. Oh, no, you're not. Dora. Grab her gun, Buster. Look out, Johnny. Okay, Alex. Okay, you've done it. Added one more murder to your list. Uh, and I'm glad. I'm glad I did it. Then put that gun down and no, listen to me. No, I'm gone. If you try to follow me, I'll kill you too. Come on, Johnny. I've got her gun. No good. It's jammed. That's why she couldn't pull it on him. Is she dead? Yeah. Well, we can't just let him get away. Oh. Here, Buster. While I make a phone call, see if you can find a gun for yourself and some ammunition. You sure she's dead? Yes. Hello, operator. Couple of 38 handguns here, Johnny. And find some ammo. Operator. Operator, get me Kingman 19970 emergency. All set with his sidearm, Johnny. You want a rifle or do you... Jake, Alex Bundy has killed Dora Haskell and headed for parts unknown. Yeah, that's right. Call Ted Harding at headquarters. Have him put a roadblock on every highway leading from this ranch. Be sure there's a block at Davis Dam so he can't cross over into Nevada. Yes, that's right. He can fall him down. By the time I hung up, Buster had my rented car started and waiting, so he took off on the main road leading from the ranch. We could still see the dust left by Alex Bundy in the Jeep. Could see that when he swung onto the highway, he turned right toward Lake Mojave. We saw no dust on any of the side roads, so we kept on going down toward Davis Dam, hoping that by the time he could get there, the roadblock would be set up. We'll be able to see you when we get to the top of this hill, Johnny. Good. Yeah, yeah, there. You see him? cars across the road over the dam. That means he will have seen them. Then there's only one place he could go. Lake Mojave Resort. Right. Ten is just up ahead. All right, we'll take it on two wheels. Glad we aren't having to track them this time. Huh? Wind's coming up. See the dust blowing off the mesas up the east? Yeah. When that east wind comes up, it comes up fast. All right, hang on. Here's our turn. Buster was right. By the time we got down to the dock at Lake Mojave, the wind was blowing a gale. The chief we'd been chasing was parked next to the tackle shop and no sign of Alex Bundy. We learned the reason from Ham Pratt, general manager of the resort. Hey, Johnny, Buster, what's going on here? Plenty, Ham. Listen, Ham, did you see where... Alex Bundy came down the road like a bat out of Hades a couple of minutes ago. Where'd he go? Jumped out of his Jeep, waving a rifle, tore down to the dock and took off in his outboard runabout. Got a boat for us, Buster? Yeah, sure have. Come on. You want me along? No, two of us is better, Ham. We'll need all the speed we can get out on that lake. You're right. That boat of Alex's is the fastest one of the lot. 230 horsepower Johnson's. Here we are. Climb in, Johnny. Cast us off, Ham. Right, Charlie. Fire up. Here we go. Boy, this wind is really coming up. Sure is. We're going to have us a rough ride. Where would he head? Cottonwood Landing, about 20 miles up. Or even Nelson's Landing, if he has enough gas. Either way, get over into Nevada. All I hope is he's having as rough a time of it as we are. Don't worry, he is. That boat of his is fast, but not as seaworthy as this. Hang on. 
Out here in the middle is where we'll really get this wind. And we did. And unlike salt water where the wind builds up long swells that you have a chance of riding over, this lake developed a chop. Waves only three or four feet high, but one on top of the other. With a less skillful hand than Buster's at the wheel, we would have swamped in a minute. As it was, we were both soaking wet and hanging on for dear life as the little outboard pounced and bounded along. Look, Johnny, dead ahead. Yeah, I see him. Hey, he's making an awful lot of speed. Too much speed for that hull of his in this kind of weather. He'll pound the bottom out of it. What do you think you're doing to this boat? Oh, this will hold together all right. It was a mad chase, a crazy one. And then I noticed that we were slowly but surely gaining on Alex. I knew he couldn't take it in that hull. See, he's had to slow down. Gradually, the distance between us grew shorter, 200 yards, 100. At least he'd never be able to aim his rifle in a sea like this. At least until we got right on top of him. Keep your gun on him, Johnny. It's going to be rough trying to lash onto him in this chop. Okay. When you pull us alongside him. Then it happened. As we came up on him, Alex suddenly swung his boat straight in at us and gunned his two motors wide open. Hey, what's going on? That's really all there is to it. Oh, except that Ham Pratt, bless his heart, had followed us with an outboard cruiser and picked us up. Alex? Well, the shock of crashing into us must have wedged him into his boat. And with the bottom of it torn out, it sank like a rock, and he went along with it. Expense account total, including transportation back to Hartford, 978.35. Remarks? There was no question, of course, but that the Haskell brothers had been murdered. No double indemnity. And Dora's little scheme to collect a cool three million? Well, it got her exactly what she deserved. Won't people like that ever learn? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week... A quiet little New England town with elm-shaded streets, picket fences, flower beds, and a killer on the loose. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Johnny Jacobs, Herb Butterfield, Parley Bear, Barney Phillips, Shep Menken, and Roland Winters. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. 